Good morning, brethren, sisters, church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. I'm still here, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to you, brethren, for your prayers. Thank you. Had a rough couple of days. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Read along with me, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because sometimes my mouth goes quicker than my brain, and my brain than my mouth. So you got to keep an eye on me, okay? Be a Berean, okay? Search the scriptures with me, okay? Come on. I have to address this. Mr. Dade Murphy... Jesus, you in Acts chapter 4, okay, Jesus never preached socialism, sir. Never did. Jesus himself never preached socialism. Okay, Mr. Murphy, you don't know what you're talking about, sir. Uh, here's a question for you, Mr. Murphy, and then we're going to go on because we've got more important things to do. Um, Mr. Murphy... Where did communism, socialism come from? Karl Marx? No. What book written by a Catholic was the basis for what you call communism? And who and where was the idea of communism, socialism perfected? There will be a link for you, Mr. Murphy, the very first one again. You watch, you saw the uh, little rebuke to you, sir. You saw that video. I know you did. You didn't comment. I kind of figured you would. But again, Mr. Murphy, the very first video in the description box addressing communism, okay, uh, that's for you. All right, check that out. Check that out. You don't know what you're talking about, sir. You have no idea. So, hey, at least you're up front in that vile, grotesque, disgusting, I, I couldn't even watch it. I mean, I, I did, I watched a, a few parts of it. You are vile, sir. You are vile. That mouth of yours. Okay. You know, I, I don't know what branch of the military you were in. <laughs> but see, I, I, I know a brother who is in the military himself, and he's a saved man. Okay. Mr. Murphy, you're defending Catholicism. And we'll leave it at that because we got more important things to do than to deal with you, sir. God have mercy on your wretched soul, sir. But at least you're upfront about it. At least you admitted what every saint who looks at you knows. You admit it. You said this. Yeah, you want sin. You know... I can deal with an enemy like that. A soldier has the advantage of being able to look his enemy in the eye. Okay? When someone has at least that much in them to be upfront about what they actually are. You're my enemy. But it's like it's like okay. I know where you stand. I respect that. I respect that even in Mr. Dear Mr. Sunken Eyed from Canada. I respect that. Because, you know, I know where you stand. Not like these infiltrating Jesuit Christians who put on a facade and pretend to be something they're not. Kind of like a King James Bible believing Calvinist. But anyway, anyway. God have mercy on you. I don't think he will. Because when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the great white throne of judgment, and when you're in hell burning for eternity, you're going to be reminded that you were told the truth and you rejected it. So, Mr. Murphy, last thing I'm going to say to you, I hope you enjoy yourself, sir. I hope you have fun. Please continue uh, to attack the God of Christianity, which I'm going to do here today as well. Um, again, you attack my father, 
we might have to talk again. I hope not. But go on and attack Christianity all day. And please, enjoy yourself. Because this is the best you're ever going to get, sir. Roll up another one, buddy. Okay? Now, Zechariah, that had to address that. Had to address that. Okay? Get back on what he's talking about. Educated man. Anyway, Zechariah chapter 9. Today is Palm Sunday. This, uh, now, Catholicism tells you that this is, what is it called? Holy Week. Okay, and Palm Sunday is reference onto the king's entrance into Jerusalem. Okay? Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Just, just one verse. Just one verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass, donkey, okay? And upon a colt, the fowl of an ass, okay? All right, are you with me on that? All right, now go to Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. In this chapter 9, verses 11, on to the close of the chapter. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, or ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Uh, and one of the videos that will be in the description box, uh, Jesus didn't know the day or the hour, we address the Son of Man, Son of God, Son of David thing, of Jesus. You don't need to be confused about that. Check out that video, okay? That video was done refuting some weird nitwit twit Eric Lionheart. Okay? So, just so you know. Verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that sow a seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and the hills shall melt. During the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be farming. It's going to be an agrarian, not aquarian, agrarian society, a farming society. Okay? It's going to be farming. Yes, brother. Oh, by the way, uh, rabbit trail. Brethren, please keep your prayers and keep in your prayers our dear, beloved brother, Jeff Jones. He's given me permission long ago to give his name out publicly. He's, he's hurting. Please keep him in your prayers. But anyway, during the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be farming. Okay? It's going to be farming. Let's continue. Behold, the days come, verse 13 again, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that sow a seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. Okay? Now go back to Zechariah, chapter 14, verses 16 on to verse 21. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Now, see, the debt for sin has already been paid, but during the kingdom of heaven, there is going to be a form of the law there because the King is going to be on the throne. Hey, you Christians and you King James Bible-believing Christians, okay? Um... You, you do realize that 
the kingdom of heaven that we're all looking forward to, especially you Christians, okay? You, you do realize that it's going to be a monarchy. You do realize that it's going to be a dictatorship. Do you really think, and some of you, especially you King James Bible believing Christians, some of you think that it's going to be a perfected version of the Masonic system that's here in America? I think some of you got ought to be like Mr. Dave Bur uh, Murphy and roll you up another one. Okay? This Masonic system that we have here in America, which has long been overtaken by the Jesuit order, is a system of man. Okay? We are going to be serving and being ruled by a king. Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Okay? All right? You, you guys realize that, right? You realize it's not going to be a perfected version of this. Certainly isn't going to be communism. Certainly isn't going to be socialism, which are all forms of Catholicism and Jesuitism. And this thing that we got here in America is Masonic. Okay? The majority of the founding fathers were Masons. Argue all day and all night. Okay? America's, the Constitution, that's a Masonic document. And I will argue with any of you, especially you King James Bible believing Christians, that want to deny that. Hey! You wouldn't happen to be a Mason yourself, would you? Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> if the shoe fits, huh? Let's continue. Now, see, another thing about the kingdom of heaven, it's all works, okay? We have this dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble, and then the kingdom of heaven, which comes in at his second coming, okay? Let's continue here in Zechariah chapter 14. Let's read 16 again. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso, that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Works. It's all works. Because you're going to be able to see the king on the throne during the kingdom of heaven. You got these fake grace or idiots who tell you it's by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven? Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father rebuke you guys. It's, it's, it's like, come on, dude. It's like the stupidity of the Garden of Eden telling people that it was by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Okay? It's like, come on, guys. I mean, I granted, Christians don't know the scriptures. I mean, that's your focal point. But come on. Come on. Anyone with that? You know what? I bet you if Mr. Dave Murphy were to even look into that, that even he could figure that one out. Anyway, let's continue. And if the family of Egypt, which is relegated unto Ham, go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? You don't go to worship the king during the kingdom of heaven. You ain't going to get rain. You ain't going to get food. Okay? All right? And you might, well, that's cruel. No, our God is just. Okay. See, the kingdom of heaven is going to be a dictatorship where the king, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, is going to demonstrate to all mankind, this is how you do it. Because since what? Since when? For like, what, 7,000 years now? Okay. Because <laughs> I, I think the earth is something like now 7,000 years. not... Millions and billions, you crazy atheists. Okay, but, all right, man has been trying to establish their own, because ye shall be as God's form of governments. It's failed, everyone! 
okay? From the Han dynasties, the dynasties in China, from the Roman Empire, which didn't really go away, but is hidden uh, in Catholicism, to this American experiment, okay? Every form of human, as you guys call them, human. Are you a human? You a human? Oh, that's one. Hey, Mr. Murphy, you ain't watching. But if you are, Mr. Murphy, check that video out too. Are you a human? Are any of you a human? Check that video out. That, that one, that one's good. That one's good. Okay, let's let's continue. Verse 19. This shall be the punishment of Egypt, and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? Feast of Tabernacles. The king dwelling, the tabernacle, place of dwelling or whatever, a hut or a ziggurat, whatever. King on the earth, got to go worship the king, okay? Simple. Got to go there. Where does that say? Go up there yearly and worship the king in Jerusalem? If you don't do that, you ain't going to get rain. You ain't going to have food. Uh, that, that's a work! You f stupid fake fake gracers, man. And a majority of you aren't stupid, uh, intelligent-wise. I mean, there are some of you that are, like Smacker Jack, that guy's an idiot. But um, trying to say that it's by grace through faith from beginning to end, you, you people are a work. Uh, you people yourselves are a work. Okay, you really are. You really are. You, your argument of that is... Anyway. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them, and seethe therein. And in that day there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Revelation 20. The kingdom of heaven. This is talking about the kingdom of heaven. Okay? The kingdom of heaven. Revelation 20. The kingdom of heaven is the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ on the earth. That is when. That is when. The Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine. Okay? That is when. Because you read the Sermon on the Mount, okay? Sermon on the Mount, all right? Guys, okay? Sermon on the Mount will be doctrinal during the kingdom of heaven because the Sermon on the Mount is all works. During the kingdom of heaven, if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven, okay? That's a work, okay? That's a work. Writing that down for a link in the description box. That's a work. Kingdom of heaven is all works. Okay? Alright? This is that's easy to prove. But see, you Christians are ignorant of scripture. That's why these guys are able to get away with this nonsense. But Revelation 20, verses 1 on verse 6. And and and, uh, and, and uh, by, by the way, you guys talk about Gog and Magog often, or like these uh uh, Pentecostal charismatic nitwit twits, <laughs> okay? Like Gog and Magog! <laughs> uh, you don't have to worry about Gog and Magog, okay? For a long time. Gog and Magog come up after the thousand year reign. Okay. Unless you are one who says that the book of Revelation isn't chronological. Oh, then you can get away with justifying all kinds of crazy stuff. Can't you? The more I'm informed of a certain individual, the less respect I have for him. Anyway. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, 
that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Uh, on such the second death, when hell, death, death, hell, and sin are totally obliterated, okay? On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay? Satan will be bound for a thousand years. But see, you have to remember the lasting consequence of sin will still be in mankind. Sin will still be there present in the kingdom of heaven. You read the Sermon on the Mount, which so many of you red-word Christians do, okay? Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine for the kingdom of heaven for this period of time, this thousand years. Uh, does not the kingdom of heaven point out that there is still sin? I mean, the Sermon on the Mount, that there is still sin there? Yes, there is still sin there. Why? Because if you were to continue reading Revelation chapter 20, then the great white throne, Satan is finally cast into the lake of fire, along with death, hell, and sin. Sin will be gone. Hence, the final dispensation, eternity, with no sin. No sin will be there. No more sin after the great white throne of judgment. Okay? After the great white throne of judgment, there ain't no more sin. But see, while Satan is bound for a thousand years, there is still going to be sin on the earth. Let me, let me point this out to you. Go to 2 Chronicles 33. 2 Chronicles 33. Okay? 2 Chronicles 33. I want to show you this by means of an example of what is being addressed here. Satan will be bound for a thousand years. But the consequence of mankind for the seven thousand years of living sinfully, okay, isn't going to be eradicated until after the great white throne and death, hell, and sin, and Satan, and all that are cast into the lake of fire, which is still a eternal burning. Andy, you idiot. Okay? 2 Chronicles, chapter 33, verses 10 on to verse 17. King Manasseh. King Manasseh, who was the son of King Hezekiah, a righteous, noble king, one of the greatest kings of Israel, okay? Uh, Hezekiah wept to the Lord because he got sick, okay? And he, he didn't want to go, you know, to Abraham's bosom or anything like that. Uh, so he wept to the Lord. It's like, oh, Lord, keep me alive. And the Lord kept him alive and gave him 15 years. And in that 15 years, um, King Hezekiah did not render the benefit done unto him. But he got a little proud. Okay, he got a little boastful. Okay, it is within that 15-year time period that Manasseh was born. Or Manasseh, Manasseh was born. Manasseh, you read this. Go ahead, pause the video, and read 2 Chronicles 33 on your own time. Okay, it talks about King Manasseh. Okay, one of the most vile, wicked kings ever. He, he, you know, he was on par with Ahab. But see, the difference between Ahab and Manasseh, verse 10 on to verse 17. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. Okay? The Lord warned the people. It's like, hey, you, you, you know, Manasseh, you, you read this on your own. Uh, he, he was a wicked man. But see, he was taken captive. He wasn't killed. And when he was in affliction... 
he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. Now, in the Apocrypha, you have the prayer of Manasseh, which when you read it for what it is, it's not, the Apocrypha is not inspired scripture. Okay, it proves itself not to be because the Apocrypha uh, contradicts with the clear canon of Scripture. Okay, clear. And plus, in the book of Sirach and Maccabees, you find the, uh, the majority of the Roman Catholic doctrines. Okay, all right. The Apocrypha is not Scripture. Okay, it is not. But in the Apocrypha, you read the prayer of Manasseh. For what it is, it's a decent read. But you can tell in which the way it was written, it was written in accordance with as if the Lord Jesus Christ had already died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Uh, no, he didn't at this time. God rightly divide the word of truth. That's why you reject the prayer. You read the prayer of Manasseh. Go ahead and read it. Yeah, there are a couple of you that have uh, the authorized version that has the Apocrypha in it. Okay, you read the prayer of Manasseh. It, you read it, it's like, wow, that... That sounds almost Christological, doesn't it? It does. It's because it was written A.D. And it is not inspired scripture. Okay? So, I mean, when you read the prayer of Manasseh, it, it's like, okay. But the way the style it is written, as if Christ had already died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. And see, here's the maniacal thing about that. Here's the satanic thing about that. You Catholic could read the prayer of Manasseh, which the Jesuits tell you was uh, B.C., you know, the apocryphal books and stuff like that. So, hey, I guess they were looking forward to the cross all along because, hey, look at Manasseh and his little prayer of Manasseh. It's as if he's praying to the Lord Jesus Christ who he was already looking forward to the cross, and he wasn't. Read Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 23. If they were looking forward to the cross, why did Peter do what he did? If they were looking forward to the cross, why weren't they more solemn? It's like, you know, we're, we're going to miss you, but you, we know this is for our benefit and for the benefit of all mankind. They didn't do that because they weren't looking forward to the cross. In the Old Testament, they were not looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden during the patriarchal period or under the law. There were types of it, yes, in the Exodus and with Noah, and yes. But they were not looking forward to the cross. That's a heresy. Okay? Read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 6. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. But Manasseh, one of the worst, vilest kings ever, and when he was, verse 12, and when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him and he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Okay, and remember, this was under the law. When Old Testament saints died, they did not go to heaven. They went to Abraham's bosom. Okay, because the way to heaven wasn't open yet because the death, burial, and resurrection and the blood shed on the cross was not there yet. Okay? King Manasseh, I, without doubt, believe is in heaven. Absolutely. Now let's continue to read. Manasseh had a change. He was a, he was a new man. He wasn't a new creature because the Holy Ghost wasn't a permanent um, resident in believers back then. Okay? Besides, Jesus Christ hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? But Manasseh was right with God. He was right with God. Now after this, he built a wall without the city of David on the west side of Gihon in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate, and compassed about Ophel, and raised it up a very great height, and put captains of war in all the defense cities of Judah, and they took away the strange gods and the idols out of the house of the Lord and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem and cast them out of the city. He repented greatly. He's like, wow, okay, I was wrong. And he had a change. Yes. 
Okay, he 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 repented. He put away all this stuff because why? Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Different dispensation. Eternal security was not there. The Lord himself dwelling permanently in a believer was not there. That that burial and resurrection and the blood of the bloodshed on the cross was not there yet. Okay? Verse 16, And he repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed thereon peace offerings and thanks off, thank offerings. And look at this. And commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, don't look at me, the people did still sacrifice in the high places, yet unto the Lord God only. And then you continue to read, you continue to read the lasting consequence of what Manasseh did was still there. Even though Manasseh himself was made right with the Lord, and I believe he is in heaven today, but see, the lasting consequence of Manasseh's idolatry, of Manasseh's clear Satanism, had a lasting impact on the people. Hence, the kingdom of heaven. That's why we looked at this. Satan himself will be bound in the bottomless pit. But the lasting consequence of centuries of sin will still be there in the people until the great white throne. Okay? Does, do you get that now? All right? During the kingdom of heaven, still, sin is still going to be there. It isn't until sin is vanquished at the great white throne of judgment when sin finally is totally obliterated. Okay? That's, that's not rocket science. But see, Christians, you don't know this stuff. Now, Matthew chapter 16. Today they call this day Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. I call it that. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Oh, what a coincidence. What a co winky dink. <laughs> 21 unto the close. Okay. From that time forth began Jesus to shew unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem. And suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Behold, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he was looking forward to the cross. But he turned and said unto Peter, as a similar thing happens in Ezekiel chapter 28, which we addressed in the last video, uh, talking about that <laughs> satanic atheist guy. <laughs> I hope you drop it. You're not watching, but I hope you drop that. That is such a stupid statement. Anyway, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what, is, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in his in the glory of his Father with his angels, that's us, second coming, and then shall reward every man according to his works. Verse 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now, Son of Man, Son of God, Son of David, like I said, we address, address in the video, uh, Jesus didn't know the day or the hour. Okay, so check that out if you have questions. Uh, it's this verse that some really creative heresy has come up. For example, those of you might remember Highlander, okay, that there are mortals living among us, or that there are vampires, that they will not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. 
that these guys are... Uh, oh, what was that movie? Uh, the Seventh Sign even touched on that. That this one guy who was alive from Rome was uh, alive, immortal because he was alive until he saw Son of Man coming into his kingdom. The second... No, 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 no. No, that's not what that's talking about. Okay? Son of Man coming into his kingdom. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. We want verses uh, 29 on to verse 40. Can you handle this? And it came to pass, Luke uh, 19 verses 29 on to verse 40. Okay? Okay. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, Why do ye, why do ye loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way, and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. No, the Lord hath, hath need of him. That's why we address Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Okay? And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes, clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. What does this mean? The King, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father was about to enter his kingdom, Jerusalem. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. <laughs> I love this answer. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. It's like, hey, they're, they're <laughs> okay? So, when we just looked at Matthew chapter 16, okay, and verse 28 there, okay, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. Uh, it's not a reference unto the second coming. Uh, it's the, as they refer to it, the triumphal em uh, entry of the king into Jerusalem right there. That's what that's talking about. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Okay. John chapter 12, verses 12 on to verse 19. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees. Palm Sunday. Uh, I just lost my place. Verse 13, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, Hosanna. It's, it's syllables, brother. That's for someone inside thing. Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel, Israel, that cometh in the name of the Lord. Palm. Now Catholicism calls this Holy Week. Okay? And they begin with the triumphal empathy entry or whatever and they equate this day as to when it happened okay you gotta remember in antiquity the Roman Catholics or the Roman Empire uh, you can probably find when Jesus Christ or as they say Jesus of Nazareth or as the Hebraic Jews uh, uh, Jesus Ben Joseph son of Joseph which he was not okay I'm sure somewhere in Roman antiquity you can't find the actual date when Jesus was crucified. I bet you you could. Remember, Roman Catholics, Jesuits, are fastidious information takers. 
Aren't you, bloke? <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. You, you take detailed information so that you can give it off to Mother Church. That's what Jesuits do. Uh, I'm sure somewhere written somewhere that if you could find that if you looked hard enough, you can actually find the, the date when Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. Anyway, let's continue. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, which we already looked at. Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first, because they weren't looking forward to the cross. Okay? They weren't looking forward to the cross. But when Jesus was glorified, death, burial, and resurrection, bloodshed on the cross, then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him when he called... The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him, raised him from the dead, bear record. Hence, you have the Palm Sunday thing. Palm Sunday. Okay. Catholics equate this day as a necessity. The two big days to the Catholic are Astarte, Easter, and, of course, the December 25th Mass. Those are the two big days of, of the Catholic. Okay? Those are the two days that, in the Catechism, Catholics are required to make an appearance at church. Okay? At, at their phallus houses. Okay? All right? Now, Go to Romans chapter 14. I'd like any of you to show me in Scripture where we are commanded to keep Holy Week. Show it to me. Show it to me in the Scripture where we are commanded to keep Holy Week. The same thing, the same argument can be made for the December 25th Mass, which a lot of Christians, especially these King James Bible believing Christians, defend their God given rights to yoke themselves up with the Vatican once a year. Again, where are you to defend people's God given rights to worship on Estarte, which scripturally scripturally has at least a little bit more validity than the December 25th Mass. Why? Because Catholics tell you that's when they're worsh uh, worshiping the Lord for his death, burial, and resurrection. Nowhere in Scripture are you commanded to worship and praise him for his birth. It's the opposite. Okay? Where are you guys defending their, these people's God-given right to do something like that? Okay? All right? We are to commemorate his death, if anything. Okay? And Astarte is, the Easter thing is pagan. Okay? Easter is pagan. All right? We'll, uh, the, the link for that will be in the description box for you. Okay? Easter is pagan. All right? It's a pagan, it's a pagan holiday. Not a holy day. Okay? But see, these guys who love the traditions of men will go to Romans chapter 14, verses 5 on to verse 12. One man steemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Uh, and also, too, uh, we are not commanded to keep the Sabbath today. You read Ezekiel chapter 22, I believe it is. Uh, the Sabbath was a sign for the Hebraic Jews. We are not commanded to keep the Sabbath today. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? Salvifically, 
Okay, under the law, keeping the Sabbath was uh, pertaining on a man being right with God. It was, a, it was a requirement. Today, it is not a requirement. Okay, this is talking about at least one day in a week, whatever day you choose, you should dedicate at least one day. To, you got seven days a week, 24 hours a day to do that to the Lord. But the Lord said, okay, at least give me just one day. Okay? If you want to do it on the actual Sabbath, Sabbath, which is Saturday, go ahead. If you want to do it today, go ahead. If you want to do it on Monday, go ahead, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. All right? Whatever. Go ahead and do it. It's not a, a required day of worship as meaning like the Sabbath or the Christian Sabbath, okay? <laughs> Christian Sabbath. Give me a break, okay? Of Sunday. Okay? It's not a requirement. Rome tells you it is. Rome tells you it is. Okay? And see, these guys who want to defend their, their worship of pagan practices will come to this to justify it. When actually it's talking about, well, I decide to, why? Huh? Why do you hide Behind the all things are lawful for you, and that's undisputable. But why do you hide behind that in order to justify paganism? Why? 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 You have seven days a week. Why do you single out that specific day? I wonder. Why aren't you defending others? God given right. Well, I want to do it on a start day. Where are you to defend that? Because that would be way too obvious and your colors would be shown. I said it. Let's continue. All right. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard. He regard it. He that eateth eateth to the Lord. He that giveth God thanks, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Saints are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now see, these guys will come to this. It's like, you're judging me for worshiping on the December 25th Mass. That's, that's pagan. That's blasphemy. You guys equate, equate that to a holy day. The Lord rebuke you. No, that's a tradition of man. Okay? That's a tradition of man. That's not what this is addressing. In context, too, you've got to remember, it's more geared toward the Judaizer who's coming along to the Gentile believers, saints, and telling them, hey, you know, you really should worship on the Sabbath, which was a sign for the Jews, which is not a requirement to the Jew first and also to the Greek, who is a Gentile today. Okay? The things you people will do to justify paganism is astounding to me and the fact that you don't again I gotta bring this up at least Mr. Murphy's up front I would back off of this immediately if one of your so-called leaders would at least at least come out and say yes okay you happy it's a tradition of man it's not verified in scripture I'm gonna do it anyway because all things are lawful on to me I would back off and be like okay at least you admit it. Why is it an enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ has more stones to admit something like that than some of you Christians do? Huh? Answer me that. Huh, fledgling? Answer me that. And give me this. Christian. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? 
for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Saved people stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone else at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? For it is written, As I live, said the Lord, every knee, now the see, judgment seat of Christ is for us saints, saved people. Now he's shifting to a general thing. Okay? Every one of you is going to give an account to yourself, of yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Save people at the judgment seat of Christ for rewards because we're once saved, already saved. We're going to go to heaven no matter what. Other than that, you're going to give an account of yourself at the great white throne. Okay? You're, you're not going to get away from this. Mr. Murphy, you're... you're you might not. You say you don't believe in sin. That's your problem, dude. You, you, you're going to give an account to the one that you despise. And the look on your face, I don't want to even imagine it. Anyway, for it is written, now he's speaking in general generalities here. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us, all, shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge us rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. And now, see, he's talking, he's reverting back to the dietary thing of like guys like Mark the Messenger who come along, it's like, you got to keep the commandment and don't eat pork. Okay? See, the arguments that Paul is refuting are those that are based upon Judaism, a false form of Judaism. Okay? All right? Not this man-made kind of stuff of trying to weave in the December 25th worship or even the Astarte worship. Okay? Has nothing to do with that. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Look, if you don't want to eat pork nowadays, go ahead. Go ahead. You want to try to keep kosher? Knock yourself right out. Go ahead. Okay? Go ahead. Don't you dare come around telling me that it's a requirement salvifically, which Rome does. Okay? All right? Don't you dare come around telling me and equating two of Satan's biggest days as holy days. The Lord rebuke you. Okay? The Lord rebuke you. Alright? We are to remember the Lord's death. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay? But this Easter thing that will be celebrated uh, next Sunday in all the phallus houses, like I told you, you, you Christians and you people who are left behind, uh, I, I bet you, and I'm not a bet man, that the December 25th holy day, as you call it, it's not a holy day. Holiday. Yeah. See, that, that's, the, that's the disturbing thing about it. You guys are equating something that comes from Rome and want to make it a holy day. Blasphemy. The Lord rebuke you. Verse 15. But if thy brother be grieved by thy meat... Now walkest not, now walkest thou not charitably self-sacrifice. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Okay? Now, go to Acts chapter 15. Okay? Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Verse 1. This, when, when reading, when these guys go to the verses... In Romans 14 and Colossians 2, which we're going to go to, okay, to defend their, uh, well, all things, are, and yes, all things. See, you guys are really getting disgusting about that because you're hiding behind that. And there is no, that, that cannot be refuted. But see, you're hiding behind truth in order to justify sin. Ah, yes. You're equating December 25th as a holy day. You're going to equate March 31st as a holy day. We are to commemorate and to remember his death, burial, and resurrection. Absolutely. 
We are to remember it, but we are not to make an idol out of it like Roman Catholicism does and like so many Christians have. Okay? You have seven days a week, 24 hours a day, to live the resurrected life. Why are you focusing on that day particularly? Why? Why? You got seven days a week. Why that one? Acts chapter 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. And see, when you read in Romans 14, and as we will read in Colossians chapter 2, uh, this is what Paul's basis is for saying what he said in Romans 14 and Colossians chapter 2. And see, you guys want to come in there and weave in a man-made holiday, like the December 25th, and a start day into it. It's not what Paul was talking about. Acts chapter 15, verses 23 on verse 29. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and in Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. Uh, really quickly, hold your place right there and look at verses 8 on to verse 11 now. And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. And as we continue here to read, uh, uh, especially here uh, when we pick up in verse 25, this is where this heresy of one gospel to the Hebraic Jew and another gospel to the Gentile comes in. Okay, Even our beloved brother James fell, uh, fell for that. Well, it's like you Gentiles just got, but we Hebraic Jew. No, no. Even James, and not the son of Zebedee. Okay, I'll, I'll work on that. Okay, not the son of Zebedee or Zebedee. Okay, that's a three-syllable thing. Uh, not even he's not talking about that. That uh, James. Okay, James here. Okay, who wrote the epistle of James, which was for the twelve tribes. Okay, uh, there isn't a gospel to the Hebraic Jew and one to the Gentile. There's one body. There isn't a body of the Hebraic Jews and one of us Gentiles. There's one body and one gospel, which after this they were all preaching. Okay? Verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Now go back to verse 25. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what are we reading to verse uh, 29? Yes. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and, things, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. A Catholic, you know, during the patriarchal period, under the law, and in this dispensation, we are prohibited from having blood, eating blood. And your Jesuit priest with his little uh, cookie and a glass of wine does his abracadabra, hocus pocus, the Jesuit priest, and turns it into the flesh of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. You're cannibals. Okay? 
All right? So in Acts 15, you got verse 1 and verse 24, which point out is very significant when coming to understand when you go to Romans 14 and Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Okay? Verses 16 and 17. This, this is a go-to place for these guys who want to defend their God-given right to be a Catholic for a day. Well, it's not, then why are you doing it on that day? Shut up. Shut up. At least, okay, yeah, all things are lawful for you, yes. That's undisputed. But at least, come on, guys. Get, get, you know, lower your pride. And at least, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves when a satanic atheist has enough nerve, enough stones to at least say up front what he is. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves when a satanic atheist can at least say, hey, yeah, yeah, I want sin. I don't want your God. Okay? At least somebody like that, you know, there's sunken guy from Canada, a sunken eyed man, you know. These guys at least, at least say up front what they are. They don't hide it. Like I said, I would back off on this immediately if some of these so-called leaders would at least say, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's pagan. It's a tradition of man. We've always done it, and you know what? I'm going to do it because all things are lawful for me. Fine. You at least admit it. You at least admit that it's pagan and it came from Rome. Fine. Fine. Okay. But see, if you did that, if you did that, if you did that, well, then how would someone take you seriously when you're going after Rome? but yet defending one of their biggest two days. <laughs> it's not funny. It's sad. But, now, we, we just read that in Acts. Okay? And the Feast of the Lord, the holy days of the Lord, are given to you in Scripture. The only one that these guys can point to that ever that came of man was Purim. But see, here's the thing. Pure is mentioned in Scripture. Easter is mentioned. Yes, it is. But when you look at Easter, which is not Passover, okay? Check out the two-part video on Easter, Lent, and Eggs, which will be in the description box again, okay? Purim's in Scripture. Easter is a pagan holy day. Holiday, excuse me. Holiday. Yeah, not a holy day. Check this out. Second, uh, second, excuse me. Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Let no man therefore you judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day. Not holiday. Holy day. Holy day. The day set apart. The one who set apart the holy days was the Lord. And notice that he says in meat or in drink. See, he's making a reference onto the Judaizers who were coming along deceiving people that they had to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. Okay? You, 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 you guys try really hard to weave that in there to defend you're, you're, like I said, you want to defend it scripturally, yes, you can go to 1 Corinthians. You can. and But at least, at least admit, please, and I'll shut up. If some of these leaders who are so adamant and cause division, and cause division over this, you are the guys who cause division, I would shut up and leave it alone and would never, ever say another word about it if some of these guys would at least admit it. Okay? I would. I'd give you, I'd give you my word I would. I'd give you my word. If they were to say, you're right. 
It's not verified, it's not verified by scripture. Okay, it came from Rome. It's pagan. It's an affront to God, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway because all things are lawful for me. Okay? Okay. I would back off. But see, see, I got a pride problem. But see, these guys who got an image to, uh, to keep up and with uh, certain cult followers, um, well, if they did that, that would just, you know, they could, if they admitted the obvious, that would, that would paint a different light on people, on themselves, wouldn't it? Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, kosherness, or in respect of an holy day, why aren't you keeping the Sabbath? And look at this. Or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. You know, if you want to be saved, you know, you got to have Pesach. You know, you got to observe Yom Kippur. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's making a reference on to. Not giving credence to December 25th. Or even March 31st. Which the death, burial, and resurrection has more validity than the worship of his birth. Okay? Anyway. Which are a shadow of the things to come, but the body is of Christ. Okay? We have seven days a week, 24 hours a day, to remember and to commemorate the Lord Jesus Christ and his death. You know? All right? You don't have to go to a church building. You don't have to relegate it to a specific day that is linked with paganism. It's start day. Why do you do that? Tradition! Tradition, man. We've always done it. And you guys who want to defend it, here is your scriptural argument which cannot be refuted. My point is, admit it, just admit it, just admit it, just for once, get off your high horse and admit it, okay? You will not find me anywhere in scripture where you are commend, commanded to remember his birth. You will find in scripture that you are to remember his death. Now, does that give credence for this Astarte Easter? No, 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 it does not. But if there was something that we are to remember, and see, why are you relegating it to a specific day when you can do that every single day? Tradition, man. Tradition, man. First Corinthians 6, verses 12 and 13. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly! Who mind earthly things? Whose God is their belly? Yeah. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats. God shall destroy it, both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And of course, and of course, First uh, Corinthians chapter ten, verse twenty-three. And then we'll be done. Then we'll be done. Okay. You know, unless you're a perfect creature from England, most people are hypocrites in one way or another. That's unless you're you're a Blackpoolian English noble creature who never has any hypocrisy. Uh, most other normal men um, have moments of hypocrisy. Okay? Just admit it. And I'll go away with this. But see, y'all too proud. Y'all too proud. You can't admit when you're wrong. And you're wrong. I don't say that. The scriptures say that. But uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 23. I can just hear that annoying little uh, 
Flight's like, hey, I'm sick, I'm tired. Ah, uh, yeah, kid. You know, I'm glad you and I don't live close to each other. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't want to do that. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things are to find out. Look, if you want to observe the Roman Catholic Holy Day, uh, you, in Scripture, you know, the laying down of the palms, Palm Sunday, you're not commanded to do any of this. You're not commanded to keep this holy week or whatever and to, uh, to be uh, what, 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 Lent and all this stupid. No. If you want to, <laughs> all things are lawful for you. Okay? But see, Rome tells you it's a requirement, which is leading up to one of its two days. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, is during the time of Jacob's trouble, are going to make a start day and the mass of the 25th of December. Very important days. You Christians and you people who get left behind, you mark my words. You'll see. You'll see. All things are lawful for you. All things are lawful for you. But how many of you are being brought under the power of many? Okay. And that's going to be it for this little video. Um, praise the Lord and um, got questions to answer. And uh, one guy who asked about the lamb thing. Uh, I, I gave you my word I will address that, but unfortunately that needs to take us back seat for a moment. Uh, I told you, if you're watching, to uh, who was on the cross, I told you to watch that in the comment section. Um, that touches on it because your question is like, well, how is God the Father in heaven yet on earth in the garden of Gethsemane? How is God the Father in heaven yet on the cross? How is that possible? That question is addressed in that video I told, but I will address that uh, sometime this week, Lord willing. But got other another question which two brethren know about um, that need to be addressed first. Okay, so thank you for watching this. If you do, love you and thank you for you brethren who have prayed for us. Uh, keep us in your prayers. Um, uh, yeah, the twenty eighth is going to be a very special day for my wife. So please keep us in your prayers for that. And uh, anyway, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.